You know, being a founder is very courageous. I'm not talking about waking up one day, calling yourself a founder, putting CEO in your LinkedIn and calling it good. I'm talking about every single day, waking up, spending 12 hours working on something that no one thinks you have any business working on, going to bed the next day, waking up, and then and doing that for, for years on end. But but at some point, if, if things work out, you start to push the, the boulder over the mountain and things start to work out. And then all of a sudden things start to get not easier, but people start to believe in you more. People start to like help you. They think you can do it. Um, you know, this is what they maybe call product market fit. Well, Forward Thinking Founders is a podcast that highlights everything that happens before then. We interview founders before they've figured things out, when they're still pushing that boulder up the mountain, not even sure if they're able to get it up to the other side. I'm your host, Matt Sherman, and let's get into the next episode. All right, how's it going, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Forward Thinking Founders, where we talk to founders about their companies, their visions for the future, and how the two collide. Today, I'm very excited to be talking to Alex Pennington, who's a co-founder of Finish and Feast. Welcome to the show. How's it going? Yeah, really good. Thanks, Matt. Thanks very much for having me on. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on. Looking forward to learning more about what you are working on. For people that haven't heard of your company, what is Finish and Feast? Yeah, so Finish and Feast provide at-home dining experiences to people in the United Kingdom. So what we do is we we partner with uh, top UK chefs, um, kind of people that might have you know Michelin stars, really popular restaurants and things, and we partner with those chefs and essentially work with them to come up with dishes and and menus and we prepare all the food for them and sort all the logistics and deliver this to people uk wide so for customers essentially what they get is they get a a box arriving on their doorstep on on a friday morning and that contains various food that they've ordered and it's at the point where it's about 90 percent pre-prepared so most of the work has been done for them. It's really nice and convenient. And then they do a little bit of, of finishing and, and plating. And, and that's with the help of some detailed finishing instructions. So they can achieve something that's, you know, uh, food from these top chefs. It's a restaurant kind of quality, but they just do it at home um, in a really kind of simple manner. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the product in a, in a nutshell. And help me understand as someone who's like a, a kind of a noob to, to like fine cooking, when you see, what's an example of like fi- finishing a plate um, or, or if I was to become a customer and I was shipped, um, sh- uh, you know, shipped one of these, can you kind of walk me through the last 10% of what I would do? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, it, obviously it varies. There's, you know, different styles of dishes. So for some of them, it's, it's really, really simple and it's just a little bit of um, plating everything up. So, what you'll get is you'll get various different components to the dish. Um, so one of them, for example, we did a uh, we did we've worked with a really popular chef um, called Tom Akins, who's got a Michelin star with his restaurant. And what we did was so there was a starter with him, and it was a house made ricotta, which you kind of spooned onto the plate. Uh, there were some pickled mushrooms, uh, pine nuts, uh, balsamic reduction, and then there was a. a few other bits and it was kind of all just plating it up um you're told how to do it so you can and there's really nice photography in the booklets that come with it so you can present it in a a really kind of appealing way and then there's a little bit of kind of garlic rub toasted sourdough on the side Um, so really really kind of simple some of them require a little bit of you know frying something off that might have already been kind of part cooked for you and you're just finishing it off and heating it back up but generally it's it's really kind of heating things up plating things it's it's really simple because i think what we what we've always really wanted to do is is open up really nice dining uh, um and really high quality food to people all across the uk and you know making sure that it's it's not really the preserve of people who who live in cities and are lucky enough to have loads of these great restaurants on their doorstep and tell me a little bit about kind of the the origin story here like why did you decide to to get started on this yeah, so um, so I've, as you said earlier on, I'm, I'm a co-founder of Finish and Feast. So founded it with with one of my old friends from university, uh, Ross. Um, 
we uh, about kind of over a year ago started to see some of these I, I guess kind of premium fast food brands in the UK so people like Pete's Pilgrims or uh, Patty and Barna Burger Company um, they were starting to do some of these at-home dining kits and it was really as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and diversification on on their end and we were looking at these coming out and we thought actually this is something that could really work at the higher end of the market so started kind of exploring whether that was a possibility um went through various iterations of the idea and you know it was probably the kind of the third or fourth kind of tweaking of the idea is is the model that we've ended up on now um and it was about september september last year where so well, we've gone we've gone through a couple of phases really. So September last year, we thought there's Christmas coming up. What would be a great way to kind of to launch Finish and Feast and give us a bit of a platform, whilst kind of tapping into our more professional backgrounds that we had before. So I used to be a lawyer, and, and Ross used to be an investment manager, and we um, we we offered basically to companies virtual at home Christmas parties. So we're sending kits to all of the employees that all have a three course Christmas themed meal um, and you know, wine and cocktails included and would do that. So that was kind of phase one. And we used that to get a bit of um, some some profits to launch the main finish and feast. So I did that for Christmas and then launched main finish and feast in January and had a really kind of successful time um, since then. And that's that's led us through to a recent fundraise. And how have you kind of learned it since you've been started with the company what have been a couple of things that you've uh learned that you didn't expect to learn uh, when you started the company yeah well it's been a very very steep learning curve um i think i think it's it's firstly i think one of the key learnings has been that you've just got to embrace the fact that the you will be constantly kind of changing in your ideas and and it's being really happy to embrace adaptability so you know we we started we didn't expect to start with those christmas kits but we spotted an opportunity we went for it and it meant that we could fund finishing fees without having to take any capital on at the beginning and then you know even the idea has evolved a huge amount as we've kind of learned and, and gone along so i think adaptability is, is is a really really key one i think also it's just um well it, i had never stepped foot into kind of entrepreneurship before I'd been in, in, in that very much kind of corporate background as well. So it's, um, that's, it's, it's been that kind of unstructured lifestyle that comes with it. And the fact that every day is incredibly varied, you'll be doing all sorts of things. There's lots of firefighting that I think people don't necessarily see on, on the kind of the surface. So, yeah, I think that's, that's the other one as well. It's, it's the kind of, you know, versatility and um, the fact that every, every day is different and you have all sorts of new challenges, which, um, which you kind of, there's no one else to solve. You, you just have to roll your sleeves up and, and figure it out. And kind of zooming now into the future, what would you say Finish and Feast looks like in five, 10, 15 years? What's the big vision here? Yeah, so I think what what we are really excited about is, as I said earlier on, the the ability to deliver really fantastic food into people's homes. So I think with Finish and Feast, I think it's it's building out a really exciting cohort of partner chefs that, um, and, and really kind of developing our processes as we go along. So you know, the dish development process when you're bringing something on is is absolutely crucial because it's it's got to travel really well. Um, around the country in, in insulated chilled packaging. So you know, there's all sorts of, of, of challenges with that. So it's, it's taking all the learnings as we go along and creating a really compelling at-home offering for people um, and being able to deliver top quality food that people can finish easily at home. And you know, they might use it for dinner parties or uh, date nights or as, you know, as a way of just giving the family a, a, a real treat on a weekend. And, you know, I think it's, so th there's all sorts of opportunities. And when you have the ability to kind of create high quality food and, and deliver that into people's homes, I think there's a lot of other really exciting avenues to explore as well. So um, all sorts of opportunities to diversify that, that you can use. And in order to make it happen, you'll need some help 
right? It takes a village to, to make a startup work. So my question for you is how can the forward thinking founders community help? Are you hiring? Are you raising money? Looking for more chefs, more customers? How can we assist? Yeah, so so we're at the point now where we've we've just taken on some investment. Um, so we're now kind of you know delivering on all of those promises that we've we've made to, to the investors that have been um, kind enough to, to decide to come on the journey. So I think where, where it would be fantastic for some help from the forward thinking founders community. Well, firstly, I think you know those based in the UK, it'd be, be wonderful if they um, wanted to try one of the boxes when we when we get back. Um, with the production, which we, we will be launching very shortly. I think it's also that um, myself and Ross are always of the opinion that we, we find it really interesting speaking to people and getting advice from others. So if there is anyone who has any kind of insights on um, you know, food production, food delivery, all, all of those kind of spaces, um, probably you know, ideally based in the UK, but not necessarily, then we'd love to, we'd love to have a chat with them. Um, we're also, you know, at the point where we're now looking to build out our board a bit and get some people on that. So if anyone did have any contacts with people that might be, be really useful and, and might be interested in those kind of board positions, that would that would be um, fantastic for some intros. And then if someone was interested in any of the above and they wanted to reach out, um, how can they reach out? Do they have a website, so social media account? Do you have an email address? How can someone learn more? Uh, yeah, I would say the best way to probably is probably just to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm pretty active on that platform, and um, we've also massively leveraged it as we've gone along and and harassed all sorts of people for for help. So, um, so yeah, I think I'm pretty active on that. It's the best way to get hold of me. Cool. Well, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. I really appreciate it. Great. Thanks so much, Matt. Pretty enjoyed it.